Am I on? Okay. Okay. Um, now at this time, we'll have the children's program. Um, we have Luke, Joe, Avery, and Maverick. Okay. You guys want to go up front now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the first song we'll be doing tonight is Jingle Bells. Okay, and our next song we'll be doing is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, do you want to wear antlers? With your ears. Okay. Okay, and our last performance will be Away in the Manger. You come forward? Okay, and that was Luke, and we have Joe, and we have Avery, and we have Maverick. Thank you. Good job, kids, good job. Would you please join me in the reading of the Advent candles this evening? As always, I am reader one, you guys are reader two, and we will all finish our reading with Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We light this candle. It seems a simple thing, lighting a candle, a quiet thing that we do alone to provide something bright in the midst of all our darkness. But it doesn't make that much difference. It doesn't change the power of the night to bring doubt and fear and separation. It doesn't make the world a better place lighting a candle, does it?
we light the candles of peace, hope, joy, and trust. As our circle is complete, and we light the light of love as a sign of Christ's presence among us, no matter how dark it may seem. Come, O come, Emmanuel. <laughs> now comes time to retelling of the Christmas story this day, everyone. We will read each section, we'll sing a song, and then we'll read another section, okay? We are starting with Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their, tent, went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Our first hymn of the service, everyone, is O Little Town of Bethlehem, hymn number 230. Our next song in the service is Away in a Manger, hymn number 217. Morning 
that's it. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Our next verses is Luke 2. And for the remainder of songs, you guys can remain sitting, just to let you know. Our next uh, scripture is Luke 2, chap- or verses 9 through 14. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and, to the, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the hev- of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest in heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom he favors rest. Our next song is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, hymn number 218. next song is Away in a Manger, which was already sung, but we're going to sing again, everyone. Away in a Manger, Wandine. Sleep on the hay. 
carloing the baby away. A little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. And our final scripture reading comes from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 11, everyone. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it, when it rose and have come to worship him. When king Herod heard this. He was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he, had, when he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem? Or in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of, the, of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shep, who shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the, for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Oh, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we have actually a special uh, hymn for the first Noel, and it's by a Christian artist that I love, named Phil, King of Israel. It used to be long, long ago in the church, and we're talking about like 15, 1600, somewhere in there, that it used to be a church tradition that on Christmas Eve, all the church congregants will stay up all night long as a candlelight vigil, waiting and anticipating the birth of our Savior. How many of you want to do that tonight? Oh, I had more hands up than I expected. <laughs> We actually, if you want, come to think of it, we actually, that's how we used to do celebrate, uh, how we celebrate uh, Easter. How do you think we got sunrise service? Because we would, so, we would sit and wait with a candlelight vigil, singing songs, kind of like in a hymn sort of level, uh, like not like, like, hmm, that kind of level. But they would hold, have these candles lit waiting in the silent night in anticipation of the birth of the Savior. And in the morning, the church will come together and have breakfast and celebrate in the next service with screams of joy and wonder that the Savior has entered into the world, that the word of God has become flesh. Boy, I skipped ahead of my notes here. But before we celebrate... There is a waiting period. Kids, do you love waiting? Exactly. No one likes waiting. Waiting, waiting is the worst part ever when it comes to life. You got to wait five minutes. Well, five minutes feels like five hours. But yet, we waited for God knows how long from the time of Eden to now. I have, th but pastor, I have things to do. Why is this taking so long? Waiting can bring out the worst in people, but it can also be an opportunity to be more like God. It used to be back in the day, and I, and I this is just from stories of, 
uh, fellow nurses that not fellow nurses, but nurses I have talked to that I want to say before 1960, and I'm probably ballparking here, that uh, husbands were not allowed in the delivery room. It used to be way back then. I don't, but I guess it's all preference now. It's basically a modern tradition now that where it's like the wives were like, "You're going to be in that room with me." But it used to be doctors didn't even want the husband in there. So the husband is out, out in the waiting room along with other family members pacing back and forth wondering, is his child okay? Is his wife okay? And the, he's just watching that, se- that second hand just tick, tick, tick. And it doesn't even look like it moves. He's pacing back and forth so much he makes a, wall- he makes a waller inside the room waiting for the news that would come from the doctors. Husbands, can you recall the birth of your first child, of all the stress and anxiety that came along with it? Grandparents, how about you who have daughters who had their first child? How nervous were you? What was the stress and anxiety that you had? Can you, be, can you remember your daughter and say, like, get out! And yet you're, you're, <laughs> Trish, and yet you're left out in a waiting room, pacing back and forth, wondering, is my daughter okay? Can you recall the clock ticking slowly by the, by the point it felt like just mere hours when reality is only 30 seconds? Waiting is a heck of a thing. But mankind has waited since the time of the Garden of Eden for a way back to God. The climax of the story of God and his creation has come to a point here in this very moment on whether or not this little baby is going to be born or not. Will this little baby make an entrance into the world and will him and his mother survive the night? Folks, I can tell you, silent, it was not a silent night that night. Because whether they're still right now, if we were to say right here and now, Joseph and Mary are probably still trying to find a room. It's only 6.30 maybe. They're knocking on doors. They're having doors slammed into their faces where people telling them, get lost. Some of them by their own family. We want nothing to do with this child that's out of wedlock. Get out of here. death surrounds this little baby this little light that is supposed to come into the world and yet we should be up all night wondering will it shine through will it survive the night because ancient times it was 50 50 chance but yet when it seemed like the chaos the world was against this things miraculously just fall into place there happened to be a little barnyard section in this one house. We don't know if it was family or not. That was free. The animals were out the pasture, and it was free. Empty food trough, throw a little hay, and it was warm and comforting and shelter from the elements. And then shepherds appeared out of nowhere from the fields where these very animals were, and they appeared at the barn because an angel had showed up. A star appeared out of nowhere, just so happens to be on the date when Christ was born. When the world was against this little baby and its mom, God said, no, I am with you. So this night, my friends, we wait. We wait through the agony We wait through the stress and anxiety and we trust in the Lord that he is with us this night. Amen.